Yes, everybody, welcome back to another episode of the United Twins with myself, CM, and my twin bro, Cappy, on the other line. Today, we'll be speaking about Manchester United's draw against Barcelona in Barcelona. Blessings to everybody inside, including yourself, Cappy. Cheers. Barcelona 2, Manchester United 2, and what a game of football we were treated to, ladies and gentlemen. Before we get into the break if down, however, break it down. It's time for the Question of the Day. That was me. Shut up. It's pretty much straightforward from here, ladies and gents. We give you the question, you give us the answer. So here is this episode's question of the day. In 2020, Manchester United equaled a club record that at the time stood for 61 years. Hmm. Which record was it and were they able to break it in their next game? So ladies and gentlemen, be sure to get Google running, get your noggins bumping and before the end of the episode, provide us with the answer. We'll let you know if it's correct. I thought from the start we set the tone and showed how we wanted to play. Bruno Fernandes had a cross early on in the game from the right hand side that flashed across the area. Fred was closest to it, but even then, I wasn't aware. <laughs> Before the game began, I thought it would have been a situation where Man United would concede possession of the ball, but we also looked to control the tempo of this game at times and successfully did that. We came up Barcelona without fear, which was so pleasing to see. And one thing I will say, is that on Thursday, that was a hint of how Eric Ten Hag wants to play in the future on a consistent basis. I think if I were to pick out a negative per se, it would be the fact that in possession, we're just not all there yet. Yeah. And that will develop with time. Strictly speaking about the game in the first half, there were warning signs, just like in the past few games to be fair. Leeds was the latest before this one where we continuously gave the ball away in dangerous positions, giving the opposition a chance to exploit open areas. Pedri had a sniff, uh, Robert Lewandowski had a few sniffs before those opportunities to latch onto the ball were cut out. But with the period ending with no goals, I was still optimistic that we could walk away with a result in this game. And that was all down to the way we approached it overall. CM, you spoke about Barca's danger, but let's get this straight. We had the very course chance where he should do better. Casemiro had the header from the Bruno Fernandes free kick delivery as well. And Rashford forced a good save out of Marc Andre Ter Stegen. There were opportunities for Manchester United to score multiple goals too. Perhaps we should have. Sure. Eric Ten Hag believes we could have at least scored four. When Barcelona took the lead a few minutes after the game restarted, it definitely was a blow because Marcus Alonso was unmarked, Fred wasn't really contesting to make the header any more difficult, but I had the optimism still that we could fight back into the match. It was all about the energy we displayed and that didn't diminish, not one bit. Only a couple minutes later, literally coming off a replay, we see the picture cut to Fred who's playing in Marcus Rashford Wobble. and there was still work to be done. Awkward angle, but still the man in form finds a way to drill the ball. Low and hard pass to Stegen at his near post. An immediate response that zapped all the energy out of the Camp Nou. The Barcelona fans who after the goal were buzzing like a phone on vibrate. And I still didn't pick it up because this game had all my attention. Ooh. The second goal once again was just all about the brilliance of Marcus Rashford. Short corner, Luke Shaw takes it and then shows himself as an option to receive it back. Drop of the shoulder, boom, Rafinha, see you later. And then as he gets into the area, blasts it across. The ball comes off Bruno Fernandes and wagams off Jules Kunde. It was one of those magical turnarounds. And then the question after that was, can Manchester United hold on to this scoreline? By the way though, I don't know if it's something I only noticed on the day. But I loved how after the goals we scored, just a casual stroll back into position. It's 
those subtle things in different environments that help to resettle and keep the advantage mentally and physically on our side. Remember a few minutes earlier when I mentioned the mistakes in possession? When it came back to buy us when the ball was cheaply given away from playing out the back and in the end, Rafinha's cross went all the way into David De Gea's net. Lewandowski <laughs> made the run towards the front post and it didn't even it didn't even need to touch him. The run and the pace of the ball was good enough to deceive everyone in the box. There were no big moments for both sides towards the end, especially in the final few minutes. I even started to fear that Barca might get the goal, but it didn't come. And in the end, it was a draw that leaves the second leg back at Old Trafford perfectly poised. You know what makes it even more interesting? What? It's the removal of the away goals rule. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Do, do you miss the away goals? Because I know it used to add a, a little bit of drama in the cut, so let us know in the comments. So, once we get to Thursday night, it will be a game for both teams to fight for once again like they did before. And I can't wait for it personally. I just can't wait. And of course, Marcus came after the game and spoke about being disappointed for not getting the win. I can understand that too. Eric Ten Hag also criticised the way we were set up, especially for the second goal. We have got to be better in many aspects, but now it's time to focus on Leicester City, learn from our lessons and go forward. Move forward. Next up, Leicester City on Sunday before heading back into Europa League action. Breaking news at the end of the episode, as you can see, different backgrounds. CMS United report, check it out every week on a Friday. A Cappy's off to do whatever Cappy does on a Friday night. But going into this, I did want to mention the soft deadline and the bidders that have come through for that initial soft deadline. So the first one coming from Qatar. So Sheikh Yassim bin Hamad Al Thani. I hope you didn't butcher your name, sir. He today confirmed his submission of a bid for 100% of Manchester United Football Club. Let me switch to the desktop settings. The bid plans to return the club to its former glories, both on and off the pitch. And above all, will seek to place the fans at the heart of Manchester United Football Club once more, which hasn't been the case under the Glazers' ownership. The bid will be completely debt-free, which is another key factor, via Sheikh Yassim's 9-2 foundation, which will look to invest in the football teams, the training centre, the stadium and wider infrastructure, the fan experience and the communities the club supports. The vision of the bid is for Manchester United Football Club to be renowned for footballing excellence and regarded as the greatest football club in the world. More details of the bid will be released when appropriate if and when the bid process develops. And then later on, I don't know exactly at what time, but Sir Jim Radcliffe also joined the race, which is something a lot of people anticipated already, to be fair, before the deadline. And I wasn't able to find all the quotes. Maybe you guys can put it in the comment section once the video goes up. But I did see from this story, uh, a source said British bid to make the club a beacon for a modern, progressive, fan-centered approach to ownership. And I'm sure more was said in regards to his him coming out and, and saying that he wants to, to buy the club, obviously, to the Glazers and the Rain Group, who are assessing all of this stuff and then feeding the information back to the Glazers regarding who will probably be the best option going forwards. On CM's United report earlier today, or yesterday now, on Friday, I did mention that the process could possibly take six weeks it could go all the way up to the summer transfer window so let me know what you guys think about the initial bidders there will be multiple soft deadlines or, or deadlines going forward so look out for that one ladies and gentlemen and, and we shall see i think don't get too excited just yet it is far from over we can get excited once everything's confirmed dotted line signed and the glazers are gone and then there's no, you know, there's no catch or, or anything like that. We can get excited then. But for now, we just enjoy the football that's being played on the pitch, the development of the teams. And we watch what's going on closely off the pitch regarding the ownership situation. How we shall see in due time, ladies and gents. But let us know what you think in the comments. Question of the day. You look 
can admit, I caught you off guard with that one. CM didn't want to do it, um, but I'm always the innovator. Roll the clip! In 2020, Manchester United equaled a club record that at the time stood for 61 years. Hmm. <laughs> Which record was it? And were they able to break it in their next game? So, how did everybody fare in this episode's question of the day? I bet we had you scrambling like the last few days of a university assignment. No joke. But anyway, here is the answer. Man United equaled a record of scoring multiple goals in 11 consecutive top flight away games against Leicester City on Boxing Day 2020 in a 2-2 draw. Unfortunately, they were not able to break their record having scored only one goal in a win at least against Burnley in the next league game. So let us know how you dealt with it. If you got it correct off your memory, slap a one in the chat. If you use Google, slap a two in the chat. Oh, don't be ashamed to use Google. Uh-uh. But if you didn't answer the question at all, and this is how many consecutive, consecutive weeks that I've got to remind you. By the end of this episode, how hard can it be? You have about, let's say, what, four, maybe five, maybe six minutes at times to pause the video, to go on Google, to reboot your memory, your brain membranes and all of them things there and find the answer and still you don't provide the answer in the chat. Do better, do better. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to make it all doom and gloom because we're coming off a really good result here. Right. I want to thank everybody for at least reaching the end of the episode. If you reach the end of the episode, you are a real one. Slap a real one in the chat. Hashtag real one in the comment section. Real Shout one. out to everybody. Preview gang. I Come hope on. you have a wonderful time. There is a little announcement. CM now, he hasn't made a final decision as of yet. But he may not be doing the stay United watch alone. Because he needs some rest. But you can catch him this weekend. Or on his second channel, CM22, 20 spelled out in letters. He's going to be doing a WWE Elimination Chamber. Watch along. So for the wrestling fans, go over, have some fun. Even if you're not a fan of wrestling, go over and enjoy the energy, enjoy the content. Ladies and gentlemen, be sure to hit a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new. Click the notification <laughs> bell and share to your friends and frenemies. Until the next time, we'll see you lot soon.